Halo semua, welcome back to my channel. Hi guys. In today's video, we're gonna talk to you about our trip to Madeira. <laughs> If you haven't seen it yet, you can click on the vlog just there. And so we're gonna talk to you uh, more in detail about how we organize this trip, our budget for three days, and all the information you need to know if you also you wanna organize a trip to Madeira. The flight. We booked it kind of early in June for a trip that was in the end of October. With the COVID situation we had it kind of cheap. It was more or less 60 or 65 euro each going back. So before you go to Madeira, one of the first things you will need to book of course is your flight and we highly recommend you book as well as well. Madeira is a very small island, very well connected with new roads in between major cities. However, you will need a car if you plan to go like we did uh, to more remote places. I think another recommendation we would make before you, you head out to Madeira is check everything you need to do before you go there. For us, we had to do a Covid test, it was a requirement from the regional government there. Yeah, otherwise you can do the test in the airport, but you're gonna lose a day because you're gonna need to stay locked for a few hours, so it's not worth it. So us, we organized, Guy in this case, organized all the places we wanted to see before going, like that we had already a list. And we're gonna share with you each day what we were able to see. So the first day we arrived there uh, around eight and a half in the morning. We went directly to pick up our rental car. And from there we went directly to uh, Ponta de San Lorenzo. It's about 15 minutes, it's really close. That's why we chose to, do, to visit this place at first. Once you park your car anyway, you will need to walk for about 45 minutes. We didn't go until the very end of the Ponte de San Lorenzo, unfortunately the time was not in our favor. We went pretty much to the end, but still we could, we could have wasted there, invested there about an hour more if you wanted to really go to the end of it. Even like that, we stayed there for around one hour and a half, just walking up and down through the hills and having slept really a uh, few this night, that night, the night before. We were a bit tired, so we decided it was okay. It was one of our favorite places, of all the places we visited there mm. in Madeira. It's a perfect mingle between the ocean and the mountain, and this is what Madeira is all about. If one day you will visit, you will notice this. This island is magical. The places you will find are amazing. So after San Lorenzo, we went to the Santana. village of Santana to see the typical houses from there. Since it was a very small place, we knew we wouldn't be spending there so much time. However, the houses are really the typical characteristic symbol of Madeira. So after Santana, we went to Pico Huivo, another hike, and this one was tougher. We went until uh, 1850 meters of altitude. So this is one of the tallest mountains in the Portuguese territory. You could drive your car until about 1600 meters, 650 meters of altitude and then you will need to hike about five kilometers until the top. It's really going up yeah. and you are at very high altitude so Uh, it's tiring, you feel the lack of oxygen and we are two people that usually work out and we were a bit tired, anyway we didn't sleep a lot this night so you need to give us an excuse <laughs> there but it's totally worth it. The entire hike was about two hours and a half We stopped, just we stopped a lot. and just Maybe enjoying the landscapes and Being in the bushes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
So after this we continued our northern tour through the island. We went to see Puebla well, Nueva. This is a, a very famous waterfall on the northern, northern side of the island. It's falling directly into the ocean. So it's really special, it's really beautiful. Well, after this we were exhausted, it was about 5.13 in the afternoon. Yeah, it was already late. Every day we went back to the hotel around five and a half, six. Also because we were at a very nice hotel and... We, yeah, so we were gonna speak about it. We, we went back to profit a bit. Yeah, we went back to the hotel. Ours was Sacarum at Cagliata. If you had the opportunity to go there, we highly recommend you this hotel. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> so for our three uh, nights there, we spent uh, more or less 240 euros with breakfast included. That's all. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs> it was already good. <laughs> Second day, we left the hotel at six and a half. Drove about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour from our hotel. And we went directly to... Pico do Ariero. 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 Well, Ariero. <laughs> you have roads until the peak and you have amazing views there for the sunrise. Yeah, it was really amazing. If you go also uh, early in the morning, just take a good jacket because mm -hmm. at this time it's really cold. After Pico do Arieiro, we went to Rural das Freiras. It's a village closed by mountains, so all around you will see a big wall of mountains. It seems that it was like a wall and they put a village in the middle. And it's impressive and if you are claustrophobic, I don't recommend you going down there. It's cool to go down there and experience how these people will see the place, the world, so it's really enclosed. However, uh, if you want to have a, a better, view. better perspective of the place, you should go to viewpoints around it. So in the mountains around it, you'll find some viewpoints after being down there and it gives you a better perspective of what yeah. it is. <laughs> it's really late. We no, are it's good. not. It's only half past ten. Yeah. So it's already a lot. So we went to um, Camarat Lobos just to see also the view. You're gonna see that there, there are a lot of viewpoints. After all of this, we've decided to go to the big city of the island, which is Funchal. We started to go to the cable car just to have a better view of all the city. You can find the cable car at the harbor, just next to the harbor, and it will take you until uh, one of the surrounding hills of the city. We decided to take the cable car because we also wanted to do the little typical cars they have there going down this same hill. The cable car the cable costs car. Uh, 11 euro for the adults. Just um, one way. And then um, to go down we took the, the typical cars and this costs us 15 euro each. It's a bit expensive but it's something that if you go to Madeira I think that it's a must do. It's an experience, yeah. something you will not do anywhere else. So after the, the cars you need to, to go back to the center you have around 25 minutes, minutes walking. walking. And we visited the Mercado dos Labradores. So this is a, a little market where they sell fruits, vegetables. Exotic fruits and be careful. Be careful. It's a place where they try to steal tourists. This is a, a bit of a trap. They are very good com commercials. They really sell you on what they want. They they don't make you think about the price of what you'll be paying. Yeah. I got trapped. Yeah. In Funchal you will have a lot of different places that you can visit in function of your interest. Like you can see the, the fort 
of the city, you will have also the museum of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. By the way guys, Cristiano Ronaldo was born in this island. You will see him throughout uh, the Statues. island a lot, reference to Ronaldo. We didn't spend a lot of time in Funchal, just strolling. Um, there are plenty of tourists who do. They end up staying a lot more time in the city center of Funchal. We were more interested in exploring other the regions. nature, yeah. As we were going there to see so, some things different, so... So after this, we, since we were on this side of the island, we took a little detour to Cristo Rey. It's a very... Uh, it's a smaller version from Cristo Rey in Rio de Janeiro. Worth visit if you are there. Just go there and take a look. Then we went to another viewpoint of Cabo Girão. Yeah, this is a cape in the island. It's really tall. They built uh, a viewpoint there. It's a bit impressive because it's in glass. So you'll be standing uh, over a glass um, balcony and you can see until the, the, the bottom of the cave. So if you are afraid of heights, maybe it won't be the better place for you. Otherwise, just enjoy the view. So the third day we went to Florestal de Fanal. It's a place full of trees. And we were a bit sad, Morgi, because um, it wasn't cloudy. With some clouds it would bring another atmosphere to the place. So after this place we moved to Porto Muniz. We went to the natural pool. Uh, natural swimming pools all over the northern side of this island. The ocean is impressive. impressive. Uh, the waves are strong, they are really high. Throughout the coast you have a lot of uh, really yes. high cliffs and rocks. You will see a very strong impact from the waves on these rocks, which creates impressive views and it's really, really, really beautiful. After the swimming pool, we went to Garganta Funda. The roads are really difficult to access this place. Yeah. It's one of the regions of the island where they didn't build a kind of highways. We took about one hour to get there from Porto Muniz, 50 minutes, in very, very, very difficult roads. Road. They were always turning, really tight. Going but this up, is going something down. in general, if you want to see some places more in the mountains, if you are dizzy like me, it's gonna be a big burden. I was scared on this one. There are not uh, guards from you to fall. It's a very high cliff directly into the ocean. But then we arrived there and we were a bit surprised because it was supposed to be a, a waterfall and there was no water at all. It was completely dry. So we went there, we enjoyed the view, but I believe that it would be something more impressive and more beautiful if there was the waterfall. It was extremely beautiful. Yeah. The colors, the silence, it's really remote, you hear nothing. There was nobody with us at this place. So, this is the end of the places we've been. Uh, about the restoration, we spent more or less for each restaurant we went between 10 and 15 euro each. And what we recommend you, the speciality that we've uh, experienced, one of the typical entrants from there, it's the Bukaku. <laughs> so it's typical bread from Madeira with butter seasoned with garlic. Really good, we eat that like in every meal, lunch and dinner. dinner. Heaven. <laughs> Then we had also um, a kind of fish that they uh, cooked it with uh, fried bananas. If you are not vegetarian like me, you may try some meat. They have two well-known uh, dishes they, they prepare there. So one is with bolo do caco, like they prepare it with a steak in the middle of it. It's like a sandwich. What? The other one is what we call shpitada. I don't know how to say it in English. So, roasted uh, meat on a stick. Really simple, but the meat is very good quality uh, if you go to a known restaurant. Then about the um, drinks, some things that you're gonna need to try is the... Poncha. Poncha. 
In terms of the coronavirus, uh, we felt safe there. It was all really well uh, organized. Everything was if, really good security. If you think that nobody will enter in this island without being tested and tested negative, negative. you already will feel better. Yeah. And then they still have all measures you will find in other places like wearing masks, guided ways so you are not mixing paths with people. We are talking about our experience in this place. We were there in a low season, so this is not their strongest season of the year. Already at this time they have less tourists there and we were not experiencing any crowded places at all. About the weather, um, I don't know if it's every year like that, but the weekend we stayed there we were really lucky. We had an average of 23, 24 degrees. Always sunny. Always sunny, so it was really, it helped also. Our um, experience. Yes, yeah, our experience there. In general, I think that you noticed we really loved this island. Uh, for sure we will uh, go back there because there are a lot of places that we didn't have time to... Okay. We, <laughs> we didn't have time to explore. So just my final thoughts on the island. Whatever you are looking for as a tourist, you will find in this place. You will find a bit of everything for you that will suit you for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going, it's becoming difficult. <laughs> I think we're gonna stop the video here. So if you have ever been to Madeira or you are planning to go there, just do not hesitate to share your experience with us also. And I hope that this was a little bit helpful for all of you and if you liked it do not hesitate to put a lot of thumbs up and otherwise I see you in my next video ciao ciao <laughs> ciao guys